So if you haven't been living under a rock, you've probably realized by now that the Saudi prince, Mohammed bin Salman, seems to be very pro-Christian. And I mean, quite literally, guys, this is not clickbait. This is not just my opinion. Like, I mean, he's genuinely like very pro-Christ. And he's so pro-Christ it's kind of scary and alarming and i'll get into that as we develop into the video so please before anybody says i'm a terrible christian i lack discernment or call me all these different names please just watch until the end of the video guys and please share this with somebody that you believe this could be edifying for smash the like button subscribe and turn on notifications guys because this is going to be a very very interesting video and i'm going to go on a deep deep dive so please have your thinking caps on and be ready to be like surprised. But basically, the Saudi prince, basically, as you guys can see here in this tweet, it says, Mohammed bin Salman, from now on, women in Saudi Arabia can dress however they want without male permission. Now, if you guys don't know, Saudi Arabia is a very Islamic nation that is known for not just arresting Christians or arresting non-Muslims, but being very anti-woman in the sense of a woman cannot walk outside without another man. So this means that if you're a woman, whether you're a mother, a wife, a daughter, a cousin, whatever you are, guys, you guys cannot just walk out by yourself if you're a woman. Much more, you cannot walk out without wearing an abaya or hijab because it seem as anti-Islam. So the fact that he just passed a law recently saying that not only do you not have to walk without a man, as it appears, but that they can go ahead and just walk with whatever they want to wear, guys. This is very, very interesting because as you guys may know, this kind of goes against the whole concept and the idea of Sharia law. So this is why a lot of people are speculating that Mohammed bin Salman could be a closeted Christian. He could secretly be a Christian because it's not just this, guys. There's a lot more other laws that I want to get into that he's been passing, which I find very, very interesting, guys. Because, I mean, as born-again Christians, who wouldn't want to be able to go to uh, these other countries freely without being persecuted or wrongfully arrested or murdered for your faith? Because if you guys aren't aware, in Saudi Arabia, they have the biggest history of being very anti-Christ. And anyone who's not Muslim, they will persecute you. And when I say persecution, I mean... That's what I mean, guys. So uh, so let's go ahead and get into what else he's been doing that's very pro-Christ. And this is where it gets extremely interesting, guys, because he also, just in 2018, just like a few years ago as he was prince, around eight years ago, the Saudi prince, Mohammed bin Salman, passed a law that allows Saudi women are now legally able to drive. But women's rights activists aren't the ones getting credit. So basically, it doesn't matter who gets the credit or not. This isn't a feminism, macho thing, guys. But the reality is, is that MBS, which is Mohammed bin Salman, he basically passed a law allowing women to be able to drive. This is why women are now able to drive in Saudi Arabia. Before, it was illegal. It was against the law because it is something that's not necessarily supported by Sharia law. But it seems like there's this like push for acceptance of other cultures, of other non-Islamic religions within the Saudi Arabia world. And so that's not a necessarily a bad thing. It's a good thing because, I mean, like, who wants to get persecuted? So I think that's totally a good thing. I'm not against that whatsoever. But I'll go ahead and give an explanation as to why this could be a very bad thing at the end of the video. But let's go ahead and see what else he's done that's very pro-Christ. As you guys can see here... He's actually done something that's actually a little more pro-Israel, but it's also in a way pro-Christ in the way that Jews and Christians both share their perspective on this one particular subject. So Saudi textbooks remove Palestine from most maps, say Israeli study. So as you guys can see here, literally the Saudi prince enacted a thing to remove Palestine from most maps in their textbooks and their schools. So I don't know about you guys, but this seems like he's literally progressing a lot further than all of these Islamic, anti-Christ, anti-Jew, Jew-hating and Christian-hating nations that they have in the Middle East. 
and it's very, very shocking, guys. But you know where it gets also really interesting? Just the icing on the cake, guys. This is where it gets really interesting because it becomes undeniable. Like, this dude's ha he has to be a closeted Christian. Because, I mean, look at this. You guys see this painting right here? This painting right here is worth 350 million euros, or in other words, 450 million U.S. dollars. And I think in Canadian, it's like almost 1 billion. So, wow, that's crazy, guys. Like, whoa. So, basically, this right here is a depiction or image of Jesus Christ. Now, I know we can get into a whole debate about, oh, Jesus was black, Jesus was Asian, Jesus was white, he had short hair, he had long hair, but that's not the point that I'm trying to make, guys. The point is not what Jesus looked like. The point that I'm trying to make, guys, is the fact that regardless if you think this is Jesus or not, the intention was to draw Jesus, right? So the fact that the Saudi prince Salman revealed as buyer of Jesus's $450 million painting, that's a big ordeal, guys. That's a big sign. Because what kind of Muslim, I mean, just think with me. Let's put on our thinking caps on, guys. I mean, I don't know what type of Muslim is this pro-Christ that they're buying a half a billion dollar painting of Jesus Christ. And according to what I know, to my knowledge, I'm pretty sure it's not only illegal, but it's against like their belief system as Muslims to draw any of the quote unquote prophets or the people that they believe in, whether it's Jesus, Muhammad or anything of that nature. This is a very much Christian thing to do to purchase a painting of Jesus Christ, because Muslims don't necessarily believe in that. So I find it very, very odd and interesting that he would have such a painting of Jesus Christ. Right. Because that's something that Muslims tend to disagree on, which I find very interesting. And also really quick mention, in case I get banned, please become a member on our Patreon at patreon.com backslash Nate Born Again. Please, you will not regret it. And if you do have the ability to financially support me, only $2.99, bro. It's less than a Starbucks coffee. Come on, help your boy, Nate. Come on, bro. Help support my work financially. I appreciate all your love and support, guys. But here's where it gets interesting, guys, because not only did he reveal this painting, but he's doing something that's seen as very liberal in this Islamic state, because now he's been meeting with evangelical leaders and he's trying to build the very first church in Saudi Arabia. Guys, what kind of Muslim does that? What, I mean, just think about me, for example, right? I'm not some kind of like crazy extremist. I won't murder someone for not believing in Christianity. But I can tell you right now, I would never, ever meet with, I don't know, any leader to try to build the first mosque in the United States of America, guys. That would go against my total belief system and values as a born-again Christian. So the fact that he's trying to go ahead and build the first churches in Saudi Arabia shows that he's genuinely not a Muslim. He's not convinced by Islam whatsoever. And you can see this too, guys, because when you look at the Saudi royal family, they don't even believe in Islam. They don't follow Islam. They don't, they don't show the fruit of following Islam like a typical Muslim. So I know he's definitely not a Muslim, but the question comes, is he genuinely a Christian or is just this just all in act so that he can bring more revenue and money towards Saudi Arabia. That's where it gets interesting, guys. So basically, the Saudi prince, he seems to be very pro-Christ, and he's enacting a lot of laws that are pro-Jew and pro-Christ in his nation, which I think is really fascinating and cool. However, we must also have wisdom and discernment because we do know that there is an agenda in this world to kind of like bring Islam and Christianity together, which is absolutely satanic. And so there's this agenda to bring Christians and Muslims to unite under one God against the whole world. And I'm seeing this agenda being pushed, like even from the Tate brothers, they're literally pushing this ideology as Andrew is supposedly a Muslim and Tristan is supposedly a Christian. They're pretty much coming together and they're being like this force to be reckoned with. They're like pro-Christ, pro-Muslim Christian, 
uh, and, and, and it's just it's just this weird mixture of Muslims and Christians coming together against these satanic PDF files. But the thing is, is that we can't be unequally yoked and we cannot be in fellowship with these unbelievers that are satanic. And I get it that we to an extent, we do have a common cause, because even though I disagree with Muslims and Islam, we do have a similar cause because of the fact that we're both kind of against this whole satanic agenda. But in reality, even though they're not directly worshiping Satan, they indirectly are guys. So we can't have fruitful uh, conversations with them most of the time, unfortunately. But much more than that, we can't really have fellowship with darkness. And that's kind of like the point. And so and honestly, seems like it could be a part of some sort of satanic agenda to honestly bring Catholicism, Christianity and Islam together, you know, because we kind of see that kind of push as the years go by being pushed more and more and more to bring that one world religion. I don't know if it's coming from a place of him actually being a closeted Christian. I can't really say that. I don't know him on a personal level, but what I can say is I have known Muslims. Let's just say I've met a Muslim that I've known personally. He has millions of followers on social media. He became a born again Christian, but he never announced it to the world because he was afraid that they were going to. And so he never openly announced that he accepts Jesus Christ as God. And do I disagree with him? Absolutely. I would never agree with him being a closeted Christian, because if anything, I feel like if you're ashamed of Christ, like the word of God says, he's going to reject you when you get into heaven. So I feel bad for him and his salvation for not having the courage in order to accept Jesus Christ openly in front of the world, even if it means death. But at the end of the day, guys, I don't know if Muhammad bin Salman is secretly a Christian. And he's just afraid of, you know, losing his position politically or getting death threats or whatever the case may be, or if he's just doing it for money. I don't know. Um, but let me know what you guys think, because I know there's some people that think he's closeted Christian, but there's also some people that think that he could be the Antichrist. And, and I mean, there's just so many views and I could understand all views for different reasons. But I think realistically, it could just be more of a money grab than it is him actually being a born again Christian. But again, I don't know him on a personal level, so I can't personally say that. So I don't really know. But um, yeah, let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. I definitely love to hear what everyone has to say. Everybody, Muslim, Christian, non-Muslim, non-Christian. I'd love to hear what you have to say below. I'm very excited and interested to reading your comments. Please subscribe, turn on notifications, share this with someone that you believe this could be edifying for. Maybe they can learn something new. And please become a, a, a member on our Patreon, guys. It's only $2.99, guys. This is the price of a gallon of gas every single month. And you can help me financially continue doing this content. I appreciate all your support. Thank you guys so much. I love you guys.